welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena we are playing a mono, not mono black, uh, chromatic lantern type deck with Golos the Tireless Pilgrim as one of the new big payoffs for the deck. So this is an update to the eight tutor deck that I played in the last format, which has four Masterminds Acquisition and four Karn the Great Creators to go get us whatever card we need. And to do that uh, and kind of pay it off, we have this interesting mix of things going on. We have three Chromatic Lanterns and three Golos Tireless Pilgrim. So when Golos enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a land card. That is any kind of land. So you can go get this Cabal Stronghold, for example. Then for Wooburg 2, all the colors, and then two more, exile the top three cards of your library. You may play them this turn without paying their mana cost very strong ability but the problem is getting the five colors chromatic lantern fixes that while also ramping us and take care of taking care of some other things what i like about the deck is it functions completely without chromatic lantern if we don't draw it golos is still a three five body that fetches our stronghold to make a ton of matter a ton of mana if we do draw our lantern or if we draw a karn the great creator to go fetch the fourth lantern out of the sideboard then golos suddenly becomes a card advantage machine and Karn can not only fetch the Lantern, Karn can fetch the other Golos, which is also in the sideboard. Mastermind's Acquisition can do the same, go, going to fetch either side of the combo. So as long as our battlefield is somewhat stable and we get to start activating this guy, the game can spiral really quickly, which is why it's the main payoff for the deck. We have a ton of other one-ofs and bullets throughout the deck. As we do have a bunch of tutors, we want to make sure that we're tutoring for the right cards in the right places. One Disfigure one cast down there are two finales of eternity which is pretty good because we have creatures like golos to bring back from the graveyard as well as a card we'll get to in a moment we also have a blood fast a cry of the canarium a ritual of soot liliana and ugin are in the deck i run four vraska's contempts because i wanted a card that could just exile anything regardless of what the opponent's playing i'm sick of having narset sitting on the field while i only have cast downs and disfigures in my hand so a whole bunch of vraska's contempts then up here we have a, in the sideboard graft digger's cage is good against experimental frenzy and arclight phoenix and other graveyard shenanigans the elder spell cleans up a whole bunch of planeswalkers Sorcerer's Spyglass cleans up one Planeswalker, or sometimes Enescanta, the Sunken Ruin. Chromatic Lantern we talked about. Ixalan's Binding takes care of just about anything. Josuves Lich Knight is a big, powerful, kickered finisher. Kaya's Wrath can wipe a whole board. The Tireless Pilgrim, number four. Abolus' Citadel, if we're in sort of a stalemate with the opponent, this can just go nuts and draw a lot of our deck. Thought Distortion can't be countered. Target opponent reveals their hand, exile all non-creature, non-land cards. So if you're up against some kind of a Planeswalker or a control deck and they just have a handful of cards and they're pacing their threats carefully, hit them with a Thought Distortion. The Immortal Sun shut down all the Planeswalkers, sort of a last resort. We do enjoy our Karns and our Ugans and our Liliana ourselves. Meteor Golem, take out one key thing. Sanguine Sacrament, gain a bajillion life. It might be a thing. Finale of Revelation, draw your deck. Remember, we've got the Cabal Strongholds. And of course, the fourth Cabal Stronghold, if we want to tutor it out of the sideboard for some reason. There are plenty of spots where this deck wants to tutor for land with Mastermind's Acquisition. You may as well get the Stronghold from the sideboard so you still have land density in your deck to keep drawing to. Yarok's Fenlurker is an M20 card, and surprisingly, along with Golos being the real key M20 card, this is another strong M20 card in the deck. I wanted something I, that could attack a Planeswalker on one loyalty, like a Teferi Time Raveler or a Narset. And I wanted it to not be the target of that Teferi. This card, they do not want to Teferi this. They do not want to bounce this. It comes back and exiles more cards from the hand. The fact that it exiles is a big deal. It doesn't let the opponent use graveyard shenanigans, and it doesn't work with Nullhide Ferox, although I've seen people discard the Ferox to this, only to see that it says exiles, not discard, and then they don't get their Ferox. But that ability, two and a black, to give it plus one, plus one until end of turn, looks innocent enough. But when you get all of the Cabal Strongholds on the battlefield, making a ton of black mana, suddenly you have this attacking for 12, I think is the best I've done so far, and it ends the game very quickly. So 
innocent little guy who does a lot of late game work once the deck is set up and just messes with their hand in the early game while giving you a body so that you're not completely without creatures, without board presence, without something. All right, the deck's been a lot of fun. You may have seen it already on my Covert Go Blue Live channel where I played it in Mythic a bit. Do go check that out and subscribe to it if you like the live feed content. And let's go play some games here today in Mythic and see how we do. Hey guys, let's take a quick break to talk about Flipside Gaming's core 2020 booster box giveaway. From now until July 15th, you can win an entire box of M20 for free if you follow these steps. Number one, find $10 or more worth of stuff at flipsidegaming.com that you like. Easy. They have singles, they have sealed product, and they have all the gaming supplies you need. So, number two, use the promo code CGB before checkout. This saves you 10% and it supports the channel at the same time. Number three, complete your order. That's it. Even a mono red player can figure it out. Please check out the links in the description to read the giveaways, rules, and conditions. And thank you for supporting the channel. May the best mage win. Hmm. Not a great hand. Not enough land. We need to definitely draw more land. And even then, we just have, like, two tutors and a five drop. The duress probably can't hold it down on its own. I'm mulliganing. All right. Um, what are we keeping? Probably duress Fenlurker Fenlurker. Nah, duress Fenlurker Karn. Does seem really slow, though. I am concerned. So let's hope we're not against something too aggressive. The deck is stacked to, be, to go against less aggressive decks. Esper, for example. Might be an okay matchup compared to aggro decks. Whoa, two steel overseers. Those will get out of hand really fast. That's not good. Of course, a Karn can shut all that down. And then we have a choice of three cards, all of them Planeswalkers. The Dovin might be the biggest threat, to be honest. The Sahili is also a big problem. But the Dovin makes... The Dovin makes a Thopter like right away that gets pumped, that starts getting pumped right away. So it spirals the fastest out of these cards. That's a really tough take. It's either this or this. I think that this is actually the biggest threat because of the copy ability. The copy ability can turn one of the servos into another Overseer. But look at this deck already. I, I just look at this opening hand and I'm like, oh, I gotta build that. There's a Steel Overseer. There's two straight lands off the top, which is breaking my heart for sure. Let's Fen Lurk him. We'll probably we'll get a good card out of this deal. Unfortunately, another Overseer is going to come down. And I don't have an artifact to fetch to solve the problem. Is that a Callous Dismissal? It is. Interesting. Now, does the opponent draw a land? They do. Oh, God. This is going to be a slaughter if we don't draw really well. It's hard to be a genius surrounded by lesser money. I can benefit from another success. Wow, Fen City. At least we get a good card. I'm sure at this point it will be Teferi. It's only a matter of time. We've got them low on stuff, but we're going to get our butt kicked. Double Steel Overseer is going to pump the hell out of the squad. Hmm, or Esper. What else? Like, what do you suppose the black mana is doing? We may not even live long enough to find out, but... So we want to get a Karn down. The ability keeps them, keeps our opponent from growing these creatures. So... Uh, they're already so big, though. They're already big enough to kill the Karn in one turn. And no attacks. Meanwhile, we've drawn nothing but land. So this Karn will get attacked to death. I may as well get a card for it. Well, wait, hold on. We can plus the Karn. But then if the Karn gets attacked twice, we can't activate it next turn. But what can Karn really get us? 
Right now, Karn keeps the Overseers from activating. So as long as it's alive, it puts these off for another turn. And maybe that's the most important thing? Because when I think about what to get out of the sideboard, I'm not even sure what will do anything. We're in a really tough spot. And I don't think I can fetch a sweeper with the Karn. So we need to draw well, we need to rip off the top. So yeah, we'll just plus this. Oh wait, we can do it like this, right? It, oh, it's a non-creature artifact. Never mind, we can't do it like that. Some solutions must be built. Alright, so we rip like a ritual of soot or something, and our life is good. Now this says when you damage a player, correct? Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, put a loyalty counter on Dovin. Okay. So if they attack down the Karn, Dovin doesn't gain. If I'm the opponent here, I'm attacking these at the Karn, and the opponent decides that they're not defending their Dovin, so now they're free to throw the Overseers at the Karn too. Well, of course, if they attack with two Overseers, I'm going to block down this Overseer and trade there if I can. That way, at least we get one off the board to slow that clock a little. And we're top decking. Our opponent's top decking too, but they just out top decked us by a mile. <laughs> wow. Um, so we kept our hand. We drew one more Yarok's Fenlurker, which is the card we put on the bottom, and then we drew all this land. That sucks. Now, let's see if the opponent uses the Sahili to turn a Thopter into an Overseer so that we they can double Oversee, which is pretty, pretty sick. Yeah, there it is. Look at that combo. Boom, boom. Monsters. Liliana. Not nothing. Could have been worse. Let's sack two creatures. Get out of my way. Slow it down. I don't think they'll kill me next turn now. They've got 10 damage. They draw a land. We've got a... Okay, we get another draw step. Hmm. All right. Liliana down, six life. Removal spell also buys another turn. Contempt. Stuff is happening. We don't want to let the opponent untap with this Overseer, so that's an easy choice. Another land for the opponent. Come on, Mastermind's Acquisition, let's do this. Ugh. Oh, we tried so hard and got so far. But in the end, it didn't even matter. Oh well. Neat deck! I definitely need to get me some of that in a future video. Oof. Another, like, bad hand. I don't know what's going on today. I hate taking the mulligans, but this hand does nothing for a long time. Now this at least has a duress. We'll put one of the lands on the bottom. I'm sure we'll draw another at some point. But yeah, we've been on the play and on the mulligan every game I've played today so far. It's definitely not going my way. Bond of Revival, and our opponent is a Sultai Explore Package Agent of Treachery deck. Holy cow. What are we messing with today? And look at the top of their deck, the best card, the thing that they're probably built around. Risen Reef is waiting for them. Just waiting for them. All right, I'm a little jealous. The opponent's gonna go with Jade Light Ranger first though. And it's going to draw two lands, which I suppose is good for us. It gives us some time because we've drawn all too expensive of cards and none of the early game play at all. Wow, look at all the lands our opponent has drawn with their Jade Light Rangers. Unreal. All right. So we could run out a Karn, which I'm thinking is best here. 
Karn's going to die, so let's go get something. Now, none of these are extremely helpful, but I'll go get the Golos just so that we have something cool to do on 5 that gets in the way of what the opponent is up to. They're going to have a lot of mana, and eventually they're going to have an Agent of Treachery. Now the Reef starts. Let's hope that they brick on Elementals for a while, but we know they just didn't hit a land card there. Alright, land off the top. Let's bring out Golos. Go make some mana. Thought Erasure. Have fun. It's gotta be the Liliana, right? So this deck is Bond of Revival, Thought Erasure, Jade Light Ranger, Merfolk Branchwalker, Risen Reef, Agent of Treachery. And a big old pile of land. What on earth? Double Risen Reef. That's game. <laughs> it's the most broken thing you can do in standard is play a three mana one one and draw two cards. Just pack it in everybody. It was fun. Wow. Go to one to get the reef off the board. What's that look like next turn? Exile this, gain two, go up to three, block one, two, yeah. I mean, it works. The Agent of Treachery coming down, stealing this next turn is pretty bad, so I guess I do have to save my life total. Jeez. Jeez Louise. All right, what do you make? So we put in three. And that would make six, seven, eight, nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six. What does Graft Digger's Cage do? Anything here? Nothing too good. Just trying to think if there's something else this Karn can do. We're going to lose, like the Agent of Treachery is going to steal the Golos most certainly. Nothing much I can do about that. So let's do it like this. I'll exile land for certain. I suppose we'll also... Well, I guess we can go get a Lantern, but that doesn't do much either. A Spyglass? That doesn't do anything. Need to be able to fetch, like, Takatli Honor Guard or something. Alright. Let's go exile one of the, these little guys. I'm not as afraid of Jade Light Ranger. And we can pass it on over. Yep, saw that one coming, literally. Everybody getting frisky. Yeah, let's just save life total. I could kill off the reef, but I think if I don't draw a sweeper or a way to somehow clean up all the things I'm going to lose anyway. So I need a finale of eternity off the top. Down to two. Okay. Probably not gonna help enough, but we'll at least see what we can find with Karn. Three mana floating. We've got a Meteor Golem. Boom. Pipe. And it looks like we're going to go to exactly zero. Sure, more Agents of Treachery. Alrighty. I've been absolutely steamrolled every game. Let's see if we can turn around in the next one. Uh, we're on the play finally, and we're short on land. But I'm going to keep it because I have two playable cards and a sweeper catch-up option, but if I don't draw mana sources, it's gonna just go, it's gonna go on the record of uh, the kind of day we've had, that's for sure. Happens to everybody.
So is number 80 in Mythic spamming Mono White like it's last season? Probably. Probably. So here, I think I like the Fen Lurker, and then I can Duress next turn. Um, Duress is best to hit a History of Benalia before turn three, something of that nature. And the Fen Lurker goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Bodyguard. Legion's Landing. All right. That was a potential hit for a Duress. Tells me the opponent likely has another, but who knows. Danto is going to be a pain if we don't draw the land. We need to get up to four land to contempt that. That's easy. I wonder what that was about. Land, please. Yes. All right, game on. Let's get in that hand. Hey, a Conclave Tribunal and three Benelish Marshals. The opponent finds this nice. I am not as enthused about three Benelish Marshals. We have to get up to five mana to finale some of them. Okay. So I need to, um, I need to save this cast down. I want to use it on that bodyguard, but really I want to, like that's something I can finale. And I need to use this on the Benelish Marshals much more if we're going to survive this game. I don't think I can fire off this cast down here. Come on, top of the deck. Jesus. It's going to be one of those days. So I could have fired a finale right here on the bodyguard. I think I want to save it for at least one more turn. In a way, I wanted the opponent to draw their land right there so I could cast, start killing Benelish Marshals. Oh well. One more turn. Jeez. All right. If the Marshal doesn't come down this turn, I'm going to use the cast down. Which means I may as well duress. This is going to be another three drop. History of Benalia makes the most sense, or a Conclave Tribunal. The other card that might not be played here is a Loxodon. Okay, <laughs> it's the one other card. Jesus. I, I, cannot, I, I cannot pull it off today, my friends. I I am a I'm just a I'm just an easy target today. All right, let's get this out of here. Oh, shut up, kitty. <laughs> Having a bad day as it is, I don't need to hear it from you. Oh, this is so sweet. Yep, you're taking all the turn because you have an Adanto activation you could do for no reason. Love it. All right. So now we can contempt this away. Let's do it before the opponent untaps. Try to take away the option to play a Loxodon. But then we're in a pretty bad spot. However, if we top deck another land, Finale to Eternity gets good. If the opponent doesn't top deck a land and plays like another small creature, Finale to Eternity is good. Okay, Snub, that'll do. Keep it coming. So do I save this? Hmm. I think we just use it. Just keep their board empty. Wait, hold on. Is it toughness? Toughness X or less. Hold on. I've made this mistake a few times. To kill the snub one, we have to do it for three. We're just punishing every missed land drop from our opponent now. So for all my belly aching, they're over there going, Come on, can I get a land? And they do. Do we get a land? We do. Come on down, buddy. So take out the Marshal, and now next turn we start making two twos. The Marshal's a high enough value target that I like going right after it rather than making a rather than making a creature. If our opponent drew a, drew a land, they could also get the Loxodon out, and the longer we keep them from getting out their Loxodon, the better. The There's a Karn. So what do we mastermind for? 
What does the mastermind find in this scenario? We don't have a lantern, but we have a Karn that can get a lantern. Maybe we just want the Golos now? It's a good question. Yeah. Let's go outside the game. Let's start the big mana. Ooh, the binding is so good though. So if this, if I block with the 2-2, get my Karn, four mana minus, uh, it's not enough mana to go get the lantern and play the binding the same turn. So that won't do. Nope, let's get the Golos. Let's get our Golos on and pass the turn. Now there is a nice trap here. If the opponent wants to attack with their marshal, we have Disfigure, which can kill their marshal. Oh wow, and they're not even playing the marshal pre-combat. That is probably going to go down as a mistake. Now it doesn't even trade with the 2-2. Two -two. Hi! Marshal too ugly to fight. That's how, what Disfigure does. <laughs> Our opponent finds a Sky Marcher and a Vanguard, so they're, build they're rebuilding their board. Our Lantern only costs one mana now. And look at that, we top decked that Lantern. That's awesome. So next turn we can start activating Golos. Let's take this action. Let's go get a Stronghold. Here we go. Don't think there's any reason to attack here. Hang back. Marshall arrives. Like, Adanto can get busy, but I get my choice of these sweet cards and the opponent sees that. <laughs> Another finale. How much mana do I have? Let's see, this is 1, 2, 3, then there's 1, 2, 3, 4, plus 6 is 10. I need 12 to do this, like, supercharged. So let's not do this yet. Of course, getting stuff out of my graveyard isn't too important. I think the only thing down there is one Fen Lurker. Alright, sweet. So you can play the lands you find off this, which I find pretty awesome. Let's go to outside the game. And we have a few options. The Finale of Revelation is a very exciting one. The Sanguine Sacrament is a very exciting one. But there is plenty of nonsense here, but I think Josu Vess. I think Liliana's Bro is the one we're going for, since we have the 10 mana. I think a board like that, the opponent's not going to get through. It's going to get exciting! Funny how it only takes one, like game of magic where things are going well to come to kind of bring you back from a funky day and the opponent will scoop it up they don't need to see my josu to know it's over all right we got a cry of the canarium three lands we're on the play it's a good hand we can roll with this All right, I have no problem throwing out my Fen Lurker when I might cry it, especially against Mono Blue or any kind of blue deck with a bunch of flyers where it's not going to do anything anyway. It also might make my opponent think I don't play cards like Cry. Island. No Curious Obsession. My day is going well. All right, so this is where if our opponent like plays a Merfolk Trickster, we get him. Nope, no trickster. Um, I think I'll just kick it then. I could have pumped the Fen Lurker. All right, Brineborn Cutthroat is here, and this gets plus one, plus one whenever the opponent plays a spell on my turn, which is annoying AF. I should have just held this back. I didn't think about the Cutthroat. I was thinking about Merfolk Trickster. I was trying to get the opponent to ambush this, and maybe they will. Maybe they still will. Would you like to try to ambush my Fen Lurker? Oh no! Yeah, I had a feeling they might. So now the question will be if they have exactly a spell pierce. I doubt they do. If 
but I'm hoping this is this is hopeful. This needs to resolve. This is the game. Oh. Oh. I guess we gotta dive down. Okay, well that will save the cutthroat, which is the biggest threat and is annoying. So how will we deal with that? Can't kill it for one mana. I'm probably running out of Karn to go get us something, a Golos. Get countered. Get riggedy wrecked. Yep. Mono blue. Not a good matchup. It, especially with the version of the deck that I'm playing, which doesn't have a lot of removal. It's a bit more proactive, and that's why it gets absolutely wrecked. Oh, tap out. Well. So we'll have three mana left. God, that's one short of Ritual of Soot. Did we already use a cast down? No, that was the other game. I already used a Cry. And in the sideboard, I can't get the Chromatic cards, and there's no artifact that really does it here, so we're searching our library. That is really too bad. We were so close. So close to excellent. So close to Ritual of Soot. One mana off. And down with your cutthroat. Still have this Jin. we have to top deck a way around. Hopefully the opponent's top decks are all lands and spell pierces that we can pay for now. Duress. Not gonna do it. But I can at least see that grip. Another trickster and... Another trickster? <laughs> Yeah, fun. Alright, good game. Ah, mono blue. Grr. Alright. We'll try it. I'm, I'm, I'm at a breaking point. My hands have been bad. It, it's just been really toxic. So, uh... Let's see if we can get one good rebound game here. I also played a lot of mono blue. The amount of mono blue I played today is pretty crazy. I'll probably pick one of those games to show you, but there's no sense in showing you five of them. I know that we're trying to add some variety. You guys complain about, well, let's face it. YouTube comments complain about anything. Wow, this hand. But uh, one of the most common complaints is that I show too many games against mono red, even though that's what I do, so I'm trying to diversify it for you. Trying. But then you just get days where you play the same things over and over and over. And especially when it's your bad matchup, it's it's such a tilt train. Anyway, we'll play the Fen Lurker. We'll exile something of our opponents. They're on Orzhov Enforcer plus Mana Tribal. The Interplanar Beacon is a sign that there's some kind of a Planeswalker deck, although we don't see any. Some spicy meat to ball. Some brewski. Okay, I guess they really want that life from the Scoured Barons. Oh! Well, Cry of the Canarium's gotta be decent against them with these afterlife creatures, and that's what they take. What are the odds I just don't hit with this? Pretty high, right? So let's wait. Let's just punch our opponent for two. A very expensive two. There's an Enforcer. So I can go get the Golos who can get the mana and start that setup. I think that's probably right. So I always go outside the game because I, then I can just leave Goloses in the deck to draw later. Since they become must deal with threats as long as we find a Karn or a Lantern. And in the meantime, they make sure we have our big mana engine. Or we can just draw our big mana engine, that's fine too. Dub Stronghold. And no attacks. Now we just want to find a Lantern. Lantern me so I can start using the ability. Pretty please. So, is it Planeswalker time? It's Tesa time. 
All right, now we're definitely going to duress next turn as the opponent's starting to get their setup together. Look at you. Can I do it? I need five lands to tap for the Wooburg, and one is the Lantern, so I need one. Let's see. It helps for me, me if I, like, tap this out ahead of time. So, if we tap like this, and then activate you, we have this land, this land, this land, and this land, and a black in the mana pool. Because activating the Golos is weird. To get the five mana, you have to have the Lantern mana. I think this will work, though. If I'm wrong, I'll take it. Whatever. Oh, one off. Yeah, we didn't have the two extra. We needed exactly one more land to make it work. And you, before you say we could have made it with Stronghold, we couldn't. It has to be individual lands to tap for the five. It's a little funky. All right, let's just fire this duress at the opponent. Try to take away their setup. Oh, okay. More land. Our poor opponent. They're having the day I had. And now we've collided. And one of us will stand triumphant. And the other... We'll keep having that day. Just one of those days. <laughs> uh. All right. Come at me. No? All right. Looks like we're going to get to start Golosing, which is lovely. So again, if I go... And boom. Then I have... One, two, three, four, five, and the four lands to tap for the different colors. So I can do this. And see how it uses up that other mana and leaves the two in the mana pool? That's the way it's supposed to work. Here's a Karn. What does Karn want to get? I like to have an idea before I fetch, but in this case... I think the Citadel, because we're still at 20 life. I don't think that the Graft Digger's Cage will do anything. The Spyglass doesn't shut down whatever the hell the opponent's got going on. So yeah, we'll grab Citadel. And we'll exile you, because you're more of an engine card than the Enforcer. I'm not really scared of the Enforcer. We'll pump you. And I may as well attack. Yeah, I mean, this has to go sometime. It has to go sometime. And with double strongholds and with getting lands from Golos and such every turn. It's going to start becoming a big threat. Also, if the opponent attacks with the Enforcer, they probably don't think we'll block, but we can because we have another. Oh, bye-bye Citadel. Nice top deck. Eesh. All right, what else do we get? What nonsense. I like a good Immortal Sun, but I also don't like turning off my Karn when it's currently working. I'm greedy, I just want all the things. I could turn off the Bastion. I could go hit the Sorcerer's Spyglass. I want to run in the clock because of it. Makes sense. <laughs> Why not? All right. Let's start here, and then go blue. Oh, I guess it doesn't matter if we leave another stronghold open or not. We'll just go like this. Finale for zero is not fun. Another lantern. Here, we'll, we'll take away our opponent's ability to use the Bastion. God, they've drawn so many lands. It's been so sad. There it is. That'll move the turns along. And we'll go get the Meteor Golem, I suppose. For the lulls. We'll play out the Argyle's Bloodfast. We can finale for zero, it doesn't really do anything. And we can pass the turn. Another land off the top. This is this is painful. The opponent's the true hero. I'm just a man who drew spells. Ugh. I normally don't even show games like that, but it's been such a day. 
I, I think I have to. I hope that you enjoyed this somewhat of a train wreck of a video with my mono black control deck. I will say that if you'd like to see kind of more competitive and I would say bigger LOL moments, you should check out the Covert Go Blue live channel. There's a video there, it's one of the first ones I uploaded called Mastermind Mythic, where I'm playing this deck and there's just a lot more interaction and crazy stuff going on. So um, I would recommend checking that out on the Covert Go Live uh, channel. And um, Covert Go Live, Covert Go Blue Live is what the channel's called, but uh, link is in the description. You can also find it on my channel's homepage as one of the other channels you can subscribe to. It contains my, my Twitch and maybe someday YouTube live streams that you can check out. Uh, some people don't like that kinds of content. I get it, uh, but for those who do, it's available. And for this one for today, I will say, was kind of a beating. I felt like my hands were pretty bad. The deck is clunky by design, but we never really had a a, a, de a game that was like duress, removal spell, chromatic lantern, golos, do cool stuff, which is what the deck is really set up to do. We had a lot of awkward draws and mulligans, and our opponents had equally awkward draws and mulligans, and it's magic is like that sometimes. Anyway, if you didn't like the video, wait 24 hours. I'll give you a new one for free, and that's a great price. Thank you for watching this video, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.